Watches and Wonders 2023, what's been discontinued, what is new, and how does that affect the watch market? So it's only right that we start with the model Rolex Daytona, the model 116 500, and what nobody saw coming, including myself and 95% of the dealers and the general public out there, is that all Rolex models, the 116 reference, have been discontinued, not to be produced, anymore and honestly i was quite shocked when i saw that but on another note they have produced and redesigned some of these models which we will dig into shortly in the video so i think it's only fair that we do talk about the most hyped daytona that's recently been discontinued the green dial yellow gold reference 116508 aka the john mayer and i'm going to show you one here this is one that we physically got in stock absolutely stunning watch by the way so I'm just gonna pop that there. So the price of this watch, when it came out, let's say early 30s, I think the early ones were like late 20s, early 30s. The actual watch, actual grey market price was anywhere between 60 to 75,000 pounds. That was at the end of last year and the beginning of this year. The beginning of last year, 2022, it, we all know it reached 115, 120. Discuss that in other videos. So what's gonna happen with this watch now? What's actually happening with the prices? Well, I predict that this watch before this video would shoot up 10, 20, 30%. That has already happened. That watch has now reached just under hundred thousand pounds. I also predict over the next few days that this particular watch will recede slightly because the buyers out there who generally do want to buy this watch and the appetite is there for this watch are just sitting on the fence to see how saturated the market gets with this particular watch, how many hit the market. Will that put me in a better position to leverage one in a few more days, weeks or months? and they will wait till hopefully, in their eyes, the price will come down slightly, which I predict it will. It will level at a price at where it was before, let's say the top estimate of 75 plus, let's say another 10, 15,000, 20,000. It'll probably gonna sit there for the next few days, weeks, months, and then once the buyers come out of the woodwork, once they start buying, then it'll reach back up to 100 again. That's my prediction on that watch and let's see how time tells. I think it's only right that we cover the Platinum Rolex Daytona model 116506 next, and that had the plain button marker with the Cacheron brown subdials, and also the ice blue dial with the ice blue subdials and the baguette dial unbelievable watch both of those models have now been discontinued they have brought out a brand new model it has an open case back a display case back where you can actually see the movement that rolex have put into that i think that is a nice addition i think it's more in line with patek and audemars pk i think that is going to be a really really sought after watch i predict that is going to be one of the hardest watches to get in the next 12 months from rolex even for the big spenders out there who have a really good spend with their ad's i also think that the actual the combination of the new bezel insert may split people on the fence but at the end of the day it's a platinum daytona and people are going to buy it anyway one of the differences on that particular watch is they have actually changed the sub dials on the baguette they've actually made it the cacheron brown ring insert like the plain one before i'm not sure i'm a fan of that if i'm honest with you i prefer the ice blue all the way through so that'll be interesting to see what people's views on that are but it's the platinum daytona it's going to be one of the most demanded watches you're going to see in the next 12 months and price wise i predict that watch watch when it comes out to reach prices on the open market between 125 and 150 minimum just because it's a brand new model so we're still going to continue on the daytona range let's talk about the meteorite dials in the daytona range all discontinued no more meteorite dials in the rolex daytonas so that's in the full gold that's obviously on the bracelet and also in the gold on the oyster flex strap these watches were already an extremely hard watch to get from rolex extremely hard they also had a very high gray market price to the actual rrp roughly not about double price i think list price on that watch is i would say late 20s up to around 30k on that particular one maybe a little bit more we'll need to double check the prices but around double list is where that watch was on the open market i predict that watch to be another 10 20 30 percent more at this current market price is it one of them watches that you'd buy to wear i'm not sure is it one that you buy to put away yeah of course meteorite dials one of ones really nice dials really unique and really sought after i think the ones like in the in the full bracelet ones they're going to reach probably 150 plus at some point in the next 12 months but yeah another one gone finished no more 
not in that model. Okay, let's move on to the next one. One of the most hyped and most sought after watches, if not the most sought after Rolex produced, the Panda. So the Panda has gone. 116 reference, the black ceramics gone, 116 reference, redesigned the new one. When I first saw the watch came out, I honestly was not convinced that I particularly liked it. So what they've changed is they've done on that particular watch is the main one for me is the dial and the bezel. So the actual dial, they've actually reduced the subdial the thickness of the subdial made it quite thin and they've also reduced the batten markers made them longer and thinner and they've also changed the bezel but the, the, the look of that watch for me is a bit more of the vintage a bit more of the zenith the zenith had small subdials it also had thinner hands it had that sort of vintage look it's a personal taste and i'm not sure the feedback i've got from my clients and people i've been speaking to they're not convinced about that model because the bezel on that one has a smooth surface that goes all around the outside and practicality wise wearing that watch the with the bezel insert in it, that will mark really easy. It's not like the GMT or the sub that has a perforated edge that goes all the way around, where if you pick up a mark on that, you're not gonna see it. But on a smooth bezel, you are gonna notice that. And for me, I'm not sure as a practicality daily wearer, you know, where that will be in the market. Price-wise on that watch, again, I predict that watch is gonna be obviously more than the one that's been discontinued. The price on that, I think it's gonna be a minimum of on the gray market of 35 to 40 K when it first comes out. It's gonna be a while before that watch comes out purely because we don't see the releases for three months after the watches and wonders before they hit the market. And it's a really hard watch to get. And you know, the market has to become saturated to actually get a good indication on the price, which will take a long time. So the prices are gonna be so high when it first comes out. Some people are, you guys out there will be willing to just I want one of the first ones I'll pay 45 50 grand whatever you know and then they'll sell back down to a price and then they'll steady out then they'll go up but that is going to be such a hard watch to get because it's hard already and you know what it is I did actually speak about this in other videos because some of my clients have told me that the Panda Daytona list was closed and what's happened and why was it closed because they've actually discontinued it. I also want to discuss the Daytona Oyster Flex range. This is obviously very close to my hat because I wear the Pikachu as all you guys know. So this particular watch there, they have redesigned it. Discontinued the 116, it's now the 126. Completely discontinued. On the redesign again, for me, I'm not I'm not sure I like it. I love this one. I obviously I love and all all we sell so many Oyster Flex watches. We sell so many Oyster Flex models. They are so popular and so sought after. It slightly changed the look of this watch for me. And with having that bezel insert again and the little rim around the outside, I'm not sure if I I'm a fan of that to be honest with you. I'm not sure how you guys will will sort of grow to like it. It's like everything with Rolex. You, there'll be Marmite when they come out. After a while, what happens with all Rolex models? Everybody look, grows to like them. Everybody, you know, becomes, that's the norm now, isn't it? That's the thing that everybody sort of, well, oh yeah, I like that, I like that. But when you compare the two side by side, I'm not sure if I'm a fan. I'd be interested to see what you guys think about it when it comes out. I love this one. This isn't for sale, as you all guys know, and all my clients, they love the, like I said, the ones, the current ones. Again, it's gonna be a while before that comes out. It's gonna be a good, it's really three to six months before I start seeing them in the open market. They'll carry a higher premium. They're gonna be, I predict, depending on the combination of dial, you know, they're gonna be around sort of in the 40s, maybe 40 plus for the new one when it comes out on the gray market. So we're interested to see what they do. So yeah, Oyster Flex, not sure. Let's jump on to another particular model, the Sky Dweller, one of the really sought after models uh, in the market, especially the steel models. Again, discontinued steel models, brought a new one out, given it a new reference, they put a new 9002 movement inside it, and obviously released the stunning mint green dial. I love that watch. I honestly can't wait to get my hands on one. If I get one, I'm probably gonna buy and keep it myself, if I'm honest with you. I think it's such a stunning dial, very similar to the mint green in the date just 41. From photos again, I actually have a photo of the watch here on my phone. It does look quite similar to that, being to see what it's like in the flesh. It's hard to see on the Rolex website, the actual genuine color of the, the dial, but I think it'd be very similar to the Sky Dweller. I think it's a really good move from Rolex, that one. How will that affect the prices for the other ones? The blue one will always be the most sought after, and then you'll have a choice of the blue or green. Would it be the new green, being Rolex, everybody's going to chase it. Price-wise, I predict that watch to be on the grey market, on the open market, anywhere from 25 to 30 grand when it first comes out. One you guys should definitely be asking for and one if you do get, please let me know because I would definitely buy them. Another Sky Dweller model that's come out, this is an Oyster Flex one. It's the white gold on the Oyster Flex rubber strap. This is obviously a Stealth Wealth watch, stunning watch. Again, how will that be received in the market? I'm not too sure because all of the current market, all the rose gold, yellow gold, sky dwellers on the Oyster Flex bracelet are an underlist watch for us to buy and sell. So it's a bit of a strange move from Rolex. Obviously this has been production for a while. I'm not sure it's gonna be a absolute winner for you guys out there. I'm not sure you're gonna jump them down and say, I'll choose that over the ghost. 
the white gold Oysflex Daytona. Lovely looking watch. It's going to have a mega high RRP, probably sound say late 30s. Not sure how it's going to go. Not that it's not a beautiful watch, but I'm just not sure it's going to be in that much high demand because it's a white gold Skydweller Oysterflex. So lastly but not least, let's cover the full rose blue dial Skydweller on a bracelet. Unbelievable watch. I'm sure all you guys out there who love the solid rose gold, you've got the chocolate and the rhodium in the current ones. Heavily, heavily sought after watches. Stunning, stunning, really, really special watches. And what have they done? They've got that beautiful blue dial. A similar dial to what obviously Patek do, what AP do with the sort of top end looking dials, the boutiques as we all know in these other two brands, what they produce. I think that watch could easily, when it comes out, be 50 to 60 k on the grey market. If you can get one, I think that'd be really hard to get. They're trying to obviously chase the AP and Patek market, trying to chase that boutique blue look. I think it's going to be really hard to get. I think a lot of people out there, I think will pay pretty much any price to get that watch when it first comes out because it is absolutely stunning. So we're into the GMT range, the GMT Master 2. Rolex have brought out two new stunning models. The first First and foremost is the full yellow gold on the Jubilee strap with a black and grey Cacheron bezel. Now that is a stunning watch. It's a nod, in my opinion, to the 80s and 90s one that Rolex used to produce on the Jubilee bracelet. Stunning, stunning watch. I cannot wait to get my hands on one of them. And genuinely, if that comes in, I'll probably wear it for a while because genuinely, Rolex has done nothing like this for some time. Price-wise, again, going to be a premium to pay on that. They've also brought out a steel and yellow gold version with the Jubilee strap. Again, nod to the 80s and 90s. Lots of my clients turned up with the original one on that they've bought from years ago. Genuinely nice watches. You know, that sort of classic timepiece. For me, I think it's definitely a good move from Rolex, something a bit different to some of the models that they have been producing. Definitely on my list is a solid gold one. Definitely if you guys get one, let me know because I'd love to buy it. And one that I think should definitely be on your guys' list because it is stunning. So along with the Yachtmaster range, which all the new modern ones now that Rolex are producing, i.e. the Oysterflex, the 42 mil, what have Rolex gone and done? Brought out a titanium 42 millimeters sports professional watch, like the Deep Sea Challenge that Rolex produced last year, Unbelievably hard watch to get, by the way. I had a look the other day on the internet. There's only 19 for sale of them in the world, so how hard is that watch to get? And I've been told it's actually harder to get than a Platinum Daytona, which is absolutely crazy. So they brought out 42 mil titanium with a black ceramic insert. For me, I think that's a great daily wearer for you guys out there. I think it's gonna be a really comfortable wear because obviously it's titanium, it's gonna be light, really resilient, really nice to look at. You know, the Yachtmaster 40 range that we've got out currently, so we've got some in the cabinet here. I think we've got one here, we sold one the other day to one of our good clients. So this is really nice watch. I think it's more of a stealthy watch. I think it's something that you guys would probably wear out there, titanium. If you're an outdoorsy person, you're quite an active person, you know, you can throw that on your wrist. You know, it's a bit of a different looking watch to the other Yachtmaster, which has the polished center links. It's a really nice watch that. I generally think they pulled out a good one there. And for me, I'd like to really see one in the flesh because there's a daily, you know, I think it might take some bean. It's probably going to rival the Submariner, which is a big thing to say. But with it being that sort of look of a watch and obviously resilient, I think it's a really good choice. So I'd be interested to see how you guys think about that watch and how the market finds it, you know, in the next few months. So let's talk about the day date range. They've actually brought out a brand new dial. I don't know if you guys have seen it out there. It has a jigsaw, multicolored sort of pattern on the dial. It also has where the day is at the top, some emojis that go around, I think from love, laugh, and some other things. I've not seen them all, to be honest with you. So for me, that dial, I think, is a mistake from Rolex. I think Day Day is such a prestigious model. It should have the best dials in, you know, depending on whether it's rose gold, yellow gold, platinum, ice blue, baguettes, chocolate, you name it. You know, the marble dials that they put in them, unbelievable dials. And then Rolex have come out with, for me, a jigsaw with an emoji day wheel at the top. I think it's ridiculous. I don't know why anybody or would buy that watch. Are you buying it because it's something different? I get that, but the premium you're gonna pay. For me, the day date should be super clean and classy and prestigious. Next, let's cover the OP range, which a lot of you guys already have. I'm sure a lot of you guys are on the list for. We get asked for them all the time. Clients out there trying to sell them to us all the time. They brought out a new dial variation. The new OP called the Celebration Dial with the little coloured circles on it. Obviously, these colours are all of the other OP range, hence a nod to all the other OPs. Not sure how I feel about this one, to be honest with you. I think it's one that you guys, and I've had clients on the phone already asking, can they buy this watch? What do you think of it? I'm going to try and get it, and I can see why. And I think the appeal with this, the, with this particular watch is always going to be the price. Because you guys out there, you can pick that watch up for five, 
I think 5152. What risk is there in that? There's pretty much no risk whatsoever in that watch. It's a dial that is not going to be seen in any other watch. It's a dial that, you know, you can stick away over time. Are you going to make money? Yeah. Is it going to be sought after? Yeah. What price is it going to be? I honestly don't know. It's definitely going to be over list. You know, is it one that you're going to wear on your wrist? Probably not. You know, would, would I wear that on my wrist? No. If I got one at list, would I buy it to put in my own safe? Yeah, I would. So for you guys out there, that's definitely one on your list you should be looking for. Definitely try and get one from UAD. You know, it's definitely something different. It'll probably have a, a long run with Rolex, like some of these ranges. So if you can get your hands on one, buy it and then put it away. So that's it for this week's video. Don't forget to tune in next week when I actually give you inside information to how the information that's come out from Watches and Wonders has affected the watch market.